instructors that are producing the, the courses and the purpose of that is to dive into the strategies that these pros are using to grow the organic traffic of their clients' websites and their own websites. So it's actually the first episode. Um, we had nearly 300 registrations for uh, attendance, so well surpassed our, our goal, as a matter of fact. So I'm um, really looking forward to this. The first topic for the SEO Lounge is Shotgun vs Sniper Link Outreach. And we have two guest speakers with us today, Bibi and Georgie. We're going to introduce those guys in a minute. Uh, I'll also introduce myself. I'm Andy. I am one of the founders of IMG Courses and uh, my co-host, Lauren. Hi. Oh, Lauren, you're muted. You're muted. Hey, welcome. <laughs> I am the community manager at IMG and I'm calling in from New York. It's awesome to see a lot of returning people here as well as newcomers. Yes, and uh, I'm I'm in Berlin at the moment. Uh, so a little bit firstly on uh, IMG courses, if you don't know who we are and you've just come in uh, from outside of, of our community, we are the largest SEO courses membership platform. So what we do is we provide uh, like an unlimited uh, membership to all of the courses which we have in there. There's over 30 different courses and uh, they cover all different types of SEO and we've got a, a bunch of different kind of learning journeys and tracks depending on how you want to grow uh, yourself or your team. So there's tracks for on-page SEO, there's tracks for off-page link building, technical SEO, uh, business management for agency owners, freelancers, and everything in there for, for beginners and also for pros. Uh, it's $97 a month and you can check it out at internetmarketing.gold. Uh, yeah, next so, prize is Lauren. Yeah, so um, if you're registered for today's event and you're also here with us live all the way through the end, you have a chance to win a free month membership to IMG courses that's valued at $97 and you're also going to get your hands on an IMG t-shirt, which is really hard to get. You can't buy these things. I and want one. Yeah. I mean, BB, maybe we'll give you one. Um, so we will announce the winner at the end of the session. So stick with us and welcome. And whether you're coming in from LinkedIn or Facebook or IMG, we're really happy to have you here. So Andy, you want to tell us a little bit about the event? Uh, yes, yeah, sure. So uh, I think we'll probably run for between 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, so set that time aside. Uh, we got kind of an interview format. It's quite informal. Uh, we have a bunch of questions which uh, we're going to be asking, uh, trying to extract as much value as possible out of our experts today. Um, I'm really looking forward to finding out what you guys both agree on and uh, also more interestingly, what you don't agree on. So hopefully we can get some friendly debate on the topic of uh, shotgun versus sniper. So uh, once again, if you're an attendee, please uh, ask any questions you have. We're going to kind of chop them into the questions that we have throughout. Uh, and then if we have time at the end, we'll have some Q&A. Uh, if you're in the Facebook Live or YouTube Live, uh, you can still ask questions. You can do that through the chats or the comments section there, and they'll get through to Bibi or, or Georgie. Uh, and I'd also love to hear from some of the people who have already done the courses from Georgie and Bibi on the platform. If you have questions regarding the course or if you just want to tell them how awesome it is or give them feedback, uh, that's also very welcome. Um, just before we intro the speakers, just to get everyone on the same page, uh, we're obviously talking about SEO and a specific type of SEO. So depending on your background and your level of experience, 
Maybe you actually have no idea what shotgun and sniper is. Maybe you don't even really know what link building is. So let's just get on the same page and I'll cover that very quickly. I'm going to assume you know what SEO is. Uh, in terms of link building, this is the activity which we do as SEOs to source links from other websites to basically build the trust and authority and traffic coming into our own sites. It's a very important part of SEO and within that, outreach is a very important part of link building. So that, and then I guess going uh, very meta, shotgun and, snice, and sniper are approaches to outreach. So uh, just as the, the metaphors of the weapons would kind of explain, a uh, shotgun is sort of like a spray and pray approach to outreach where you send a lot of emails which have uh, a low amount of personalization, customers, customization, segmentation, that kind of thing. And sniper is where you send far less emails, but they're far more personal, they're far more customized and, and researched. So obviously they take a lot more time. Um, they're, they're quite different approaches. Bibi, how was that uh, <laughs> explanation? Do you want to add anything? Yeah, anything? it was good. <laughs> um, I I want to say more, but I'm going to just wait till the questions and uh, see what you guys really want to know. Okay. Well, uh, I'd like to introduce you at this point then. Yeah. Uh, Bibi Raven from Bibi Buzz. Welcome. Hi. It's great to have you. Uh, I'd like to first announce that you are the winner of our monthly instructor prize. It's just oh. been announced. I don't know if you've checked your email. T-shirts? Am I getting Get a t-shirt. <laughs> it's coming your way. <laughs> so your course was the second most popular. It didn't beat Kyle's on-page SEO course, but nobody beats Kyle's on-page SEO course and he's got far too many t-shirts already. So we gave it to well, you. <laughs> that's for him. So it's not really fair, right? I mean, it's probably all rigged. Oh, I, it's really <laughs> not rigged. <laughs> I swear to God, I would be very happy if Carl didn't win every single month. <laughs> no, but it's really cool. Yeah, I'm not going to tell everyone to stop watching Carl's courses because they're good, but <laughs> give everyone else a chance. Uh, so, Bibi, you started out actually in social media before moving into SEO. Yeah. Um, I understand. Uh, Bibi has been featured in uh, publications like Search Engine Journal, Authority Hacker, Craig Campbell SEO, and you are also an IMG course instructor with a course link outreach that doesn't suck. The course which yeah. just won the second most popular course. I'm a poet. Uh, Georgie. Georgie is a former SEO manager at SEM Rush, and he's now the founder of ThriveMyWay.com, his new business, which actually just launched today. So that's Ooh, pretty yes. exciting. Like Thank you for the shout out. <laughs> uh, you've been doing, uh, Georgie's been doing link building since 2013 and specializing in uh, outreach methods. He's also a contributor at Search Engine Watch, SEM Rush, Local SEO Checklist, and Huffington Post. Now, yeah. was it actually, anything... I started uh, freelancing uh, in uh, uh, 2013, and uh, from uh, 2016, I've been doing uh, link building and outreach. So for three years, I've been doing all the odd uh, jobs like uh, uh, copywriting, translate translations, even uh, uh, over the phone, uh, interpreting on demand, stuff like that, everything. But I also always uh, liked uh, SEO and tried to get into that field. So finally in 2016, I started uh, doing only outreach and link building. Sorry to interrupt you. Right, okay. And uh, you're coming to us from Bulgaria, Sofia, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Excellent. I love that city. Uh, I'm also interested to hear more about what being the SEO manager of one of the largest SEO software platforms involves, but we can discuss more about that later. Uh, is there anything else that you guys wanted to mention about uh, yourselves or your businesses? 
Um, nope, not necessarily. I want to get into the meat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why don't we actually start with a, a quick intro to the uh, the businesses which you guys are running on a day to day basis? Um, we start with you, Bibi. Can you tell us a little bit a bit about uh, BibiBuzz.com and why you named it Bibi Buzz? Oh, that's going to be so boring because um, I already had clients before I started uh, the business. So I was building affiliate sites. I had a little mastermind with friends that were also building affiliate sites. And they asked me to do link building and I didn't know anything about it yet. Um, so they were paying me and then that attracted other clients. And then I had to have a, a website, uh, you know, with my information on it. So I started to look for domain names and nothing cool was uh, available and then bb buzz was just left over and i was like yeah i'll do that um and that's that's how i got bbbuzz.com now i kind of mm -hmm. regret it but um i'm also known as bb the link builder that got inspired by bob the builder i don't know if you know that cartoon but i really like the cartoon so i thought i'll be bb the link builder and then people remember me that way and they know what i do but um, yeah, I, I cater to clients all over the world, uh, brands, uh, you name it. I have 30 people now that uh, build links for me. Um, yeah, and I'm also training other agencies, you know, to, to help them uh, with their link building efforts. Very cool. And Georgie, why don't you tell us about your new business, Thrive My Way? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, basically, um, I've been working for clients for a couple of years, SEO clients, yeah. and uh, I wanted to, to start something uh, which is my own, where I can uh, test uh, different strategies, where I can uh, put all of my efforts or at least most of my efforts. So uh, I'm changing the direction a little bit, not working uh, so much for clients and instead uh, I want to develop my own platform where I can um, produce content and try different strategies. So it just uh, came naturally. Awesome. So let's get into the meat of all of this. And we want answers from both of you because we predict a face-off on sniper versus shotgun. Uh, so we're going to just you know, go a little bit back and forth. We're going to start with the softball. So can you take us through each of you, what you teach in your IMG course? Um, you want to go first, Georgie? No, no, no. You're the first one always. All right. Okay. Um, well, the main point of the course is that um, you got to find a happy medium between uh, uh, personalization and scaling. And, and it's funny because we're talking about two methods that are on the other end of the, of the, of the spectrum in terms of that. But, but what I teach is kind of the middle version where you do use templates. So you do use the same email for, uh, for your prospects. But before that, you have segmented your prospects list. So instead of going after uh, fashion bloggers you go after vegan fashion bloggers and then you can completely customize your template in a way so that it feels like you're making a connection with the other person just like how a song can make an instant connection with somebody um, that you don't know so that's what my course uh, teaches people is uh, yeah you can do bespoke email where you write a very unique email for one person and then your conversion rate is really high in terms of links, um, but it takes you a lot of time and a lot of headspace. But you can also do mass email, which is a very generic template that you send out to 50,000 people, but the conversion is really low. So what I'm teaching is how to find the middle, uh, yeah, middle ground in that. Awesome. Excellent. How about you, Georgie? Well, uh, let me tell you the story how I uh, decided to make this course. Um, I was freelancing on Upwork. And basically, uh, most of the clients in Upwork are uh, low-paying clients that you don't want if you are offering services, SEO services. Um, but um, they uh, wanted link building and um, they couldn't afford to pay much 
maybe they wanted to hire a virtual assistant to follow uh, some processes and to do some work for them. But the virtual assistants that they hired didn't have the knowledge. Of course, there are many uh, articles in the internet that teach you to do guest posting, that teach you to do this and that, but they are not detailed enough, not enough actionable, not uh, explained well. That's why I decided to create my course. So every uh, online entrepreneur or a small agency owner, small business owner can get this course, can uh, go to Upwork or another website, find uh, a freelancer, virtual assistant, uh, hire him. This could be someone who is completely beginner, newbie, and uh, give them my course and they can start building backlinks from week one. Maybe not day one, but the first week. Excellent. And so for both of you right now, what are the top one to two outreach methods that are really working? Um, so when you say outreach method, what do you actually mean? Yeah, I mean, I think we're talking here, is it is it about the segmentation, any sort of technique or part oh. of outreach that's, it could be about anything, you know, something that you feel right now is really working. Uh, I guess by working, we're talking about getting responses, getting to the next stage in the negotiation uh, yeah. and placing links. I think for me, and, and this is funny because I actually don't have any judgment on how other people do link building, because I think that any strategy is as good as its execution. You know, you can do sniper, you can do um, shotgun, or you can do even spam links, but if you do them really well, it doesn't really matter. So uh, for me, uh, what works now is the, the best method is um, doing the segmenting and theming and not thinking like a link builder. So I hire copywriters because they don't care about links. They only care about good content and they also care about helping their clients um, sell and engage uh, with or to their audience. So if you hire a copywriter to do outreach, they'll come up with outreach emails that you never thought about because they're not thinking about the link. They're thinking about how can I pitch content, whether that's a guest post or an existing uh, linkable asset on your site that really helps the prospect uh, reach their business goals. So for me, um, I think in terms of outreach method, you really got to forget about the link and put yourself in the perspective of your prospect and hiring copywriters is, is one of the easiest ways to do that. That's brilliant. I just want to tell that uh, this uh, little hack to hire a copywriter to create your emails and maybe to do the whole conversation with yeah. the editors is brilliant. Genius. Um, do you finish or anything else? <laughs> Mm, about me, um, I like to do a mixture of uh, different methods and it always depends. It depends uh, on the industry. It depends on what uh, resources the client has, what uh, are their strong sides, what mm, partners they have as well. Um, for example, I like to do guest posting, I like to uh, relationship-based link building and also creating linkable assets because outreach, it gets uh, harder and harder. Bloggers, they want money. Bloggers want something in exchange. It's not like a couple of years ago when uh, the outreach was uh, much easier. Mm, so I'm focusing more and more on creating the linkable assets, creating uh, this angle in the content that will allow you to pick up the backlinks naturally in the long run. Yeah, and so Georgie, when you say angle, are you talking you know, something that's different? Can you kind of expand on that a little bit more of what makes an asset really linkable, irresistible really? Well, uh, here, you are uh, writing for a very specific and small 
group, you are creating the asset for them. Those people are other bloggers or journalists, content creators, and uh, you want to be their source of information. When they are writing their piece of content, they will need, uh, for example, a statistic to back up their point, to prove their point. And they will go to Google, they will search for uh, their topic and they will put the word statistics, stats, facts, numbers, figures, something like that. And if you're the one to appear in the top of that search in the SERP, um, you may get uh, featured in their article. They may borrow a statistic from you and they may link to you as the source. Yeah, that's actually one of the best ways to get links because you just create the source and you don't have to do anything anymore. Well, you can boost it a little bit with some links, but it just runs by itself. I had this morning, I got a link from a Goodman project and it was uh, linking to uh, a stats article around kissing, you know, and it had to do with relationships and etiquette and, and post lockdown and all that stuff. So uh, what Georgie says, that's definitely a super method. You just have are to you, find the stats or create them or, yeah. Are you just bragging that you are a kissing expert and creating content? <laughs> <laughs> no, I suck at kissing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Maybe that's because you've got a chicken on your head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the chicken right. is. I, I try to kiss People someone. distracted by the chicken. The head. Yeah, but the yeah. chicken's feeling jealous. Yeah, so the, the stats roundups are, are, are so cool, but I do feel with, when I do them, Georgie, I don't know how it is with you, that they half of the time they don't pick up anything. So for me, it's like really half the time it works and half the time it doesn't work. Yeah, of course, everything is like that. And uh, yeah, especially for uh, the most competitive niches, you need to build some backlinks to those uh, linkable assets, to those statistic posts to make them rank on the first page. And after that, uh, once they uh, start attracting links naturally you don't need to build more links but uh, for other non-competitive niches you can rank um, just with a few internal links so if it's uh, some uh, not so famous industry where uh, maybe maybe there are only five statistic results in the SERP you, you are number six by day one and a couple of uh, internal links, you may get to top three. And after that, you get links naturally. Nice. So to summarize what you guys are saying, you uh, both really like the method of building, uh, I'm guessing it, sometimes people might call it like skyscraper content, uh, getting that to rank using some uh, guest post links uh, based on uh, like a just to build up a bit of a bit of momentum and then let that momentum just carry through with its natural flow and generate its own links for the long term. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing. Uh, you need to rank uh, first for the uh, keyword phrase that journalists are looking for. So if the journalist is writing an article about uh, blogging, they want to find a statistic about blogging. So they will go to Google and they will type blogging stats 2021. And probably they will find uh, the article uh, that Orbit Media created. Andy Christodino is doing this uh, annual survey um, and he's producing a lot of stats. So they will find this article, they will grab a statistic and they will use it in their article and they will link back to you as the source. But for you to have a chance to be found by them, you need to build a couple of internal links to place yourself um, in the top of Google for the term blogging stats in this uh, example. Excellent. All right, so we have established that BB uses a combination of both sniper and shotgun. Georgie, what about you? Are you one side or the other? Where do you stand? Well, uh, mm, it depends, of course. This is yeah. the most common answer that you get in the SEO world when someone asks something. Well, it depends. Uh, 
sometimes when you have a really small list, a really small outreach list, it's better to personalize it more. But what is personalization nowadays? It's no longer uh, your uh, website name in the subject line, your target. Uh, it's not your uh, prospect first name in the first line of the email. It's not mentioning their recent, most recent article in the email as well, because all those stuff could be uh, automated super easily by outreach tools. So it should be something super genuine, something that you found uh, following those people, social media accounts. So for example, for Bibi, I know that she's, uh, uh, yeah, basically she's a very nice person, a little bit crazy. Uh, she's uh, a mixture of Dutch, Indonesian. Uh, she spoke at Brighton SEO. Um, and she had super quick development in link building a couple of years ago when, when she started. I remember her, she was a beginner and then she just blossomed super quickly. So I can, I have enough information to reach out to her and show her that I really followed her journey. But uh, sometimes it's not possible to get this genuine information. Maybe if you are in the industry for a long time, you can make a list of people that you want to follow, establish a relationship with them, friendship, uh, send a friend uh, request on Facebook, follow them on LinkedIn, Twitter, check their blog, and you will know a, a lot about them. And when you need a link, they will give you a link. Yeah. Uh, sometimes when you want something uh, else, like for example, if you want to check if they accept guest posts, well, it's just a simple email needed here. Maybe three lines. Hi there, do you accept guest posts at your blog? You don't want to waste uh, 30 minutes to check their personal life or their hobbies and their personal projects because uh, sometimes blogs just don't accept guest posts at the moment. So you will um, waste all of your time trying to get uh, personal to make uh, good personalization and after that uh, they will tell you oh very kind sorry but we don't accept guest posts at the moment reach us reach out to us again in september that's why it really depends of your situation and so, so i guess it's kind of it is definitely a matter of a trade-off between the scalability and the likelihood of a conversion in terms of a link placement. Am I yeah. right? So how much, how do you work out how much to trade off in terms of how much you're willing to put into uh, personalization versus what the, the link is going to be actually worth? You might, you might have to procure a hundred different links that month. So it's just not possible to, to put in so much effort. Yeah. Um, the thing is, is that if you have, okay, so let's say you gotta get hundred links, right? If you have the time and a headspace, it will be so good to just write bespoke email, what, what Georgie just described, because your conversion rate can be 80%. I used to write bespoke emails and the conversion rate is so high that scaling doesn't even matter because you'll get so many links out of it. So if you gotta get hundred links, you send, uh, for 20 days, you send 10 emails a day, you get way more links, right? But yeah. not, not everybody has the time uh, for it, so they, so they can't do it. Um, so it really depends on how much time and headspace you have. But if you have plenty of that and you don't have money, for instance, I would definitely write bespoke emails because the conversion rate is so high. But uh, there was one other thing about the personalization. What I wanted to say was that... Um, yeah, I do think that that following somebody socially can help. But what I often do with bespoke emails is that I look at the site and I look for anything that jumps out at me. For instance, if uh, if there's a tagline, so a lot of businesses they have taglines right under their logo. I just take that tagline and I I I mess it up. So 
I mess up one of the words or I make a funny word joke with their tagline. And then I put that in a subject line because a person even consciously or subconsciously will notice that it's their tagline. So they'll open up the email and they'll also know that you have looked at their, uh, that their site and that you're really interested in them. And that way there, if you look at somebody's site, there's so many other ways to personalize it. If, if they're interested in uh, logistics, for instance, you can look at the latest uh, stats from logistics and say, look, there are uh, 8 million um, Mercedes trucks on the road and 20% uh, of them uh, explode um, automatically. I don't know. So there's something weird, right? And you put it in the subject line. And that's another way of personalizing. So um, I do want to, uh, how, how do I say, I want to want to help people that they don't think they have to make everything about somebody's hobbies or social things. You can just look at their interests uh, and look at stuff elements on our site and, and, you know, put that in a bespoke email. That's really great. So how about if we flip the script a little bit yeah. and you tell us about what are some things that aren't working right now, or maybe used to work and don't work anymore? Oh yeah. Um, so I don't look for, if a site has right for us in a navigation or anywhere else, I don't go for those sites anymore. Uh, because they used to be genuinely good sites that really wanted uh, content from guest writers, but now they're just SEOs, um, honey dicking other SEOs to sell links to them. So I definitely, I wouldn't go for those anymore. And also I wouldn't copy uh, templates out there because um, like Georgie said, a lot of things worked really well back then, but we marketers, we just ruin everything. So we just do those the same thing a million times over and then it stops working, duh. So don't copy shit and also avoid those right for us sites. Except if they're yeah. really good, no, then, then it's okay. Um, what uh, worked <clears throat> really well a couple of years ago was uh, this template. Uh, Hi there, uh, I read uh, <laughs> your article, blah, blah, blah. It's super nice. Okay, you're complimenting them. Actually, I wrote this guide here. So uh, it will be really nice for your audience if you link back to my guide. It will bring a lot of value to your audience, blah, blah, blah. And probably if you send 100 emails, you'll get a couple of backlinks. Uh, this is super easy to make uh, in a template with uh, uh, variables and uh, just automate it super quickly. But this uh, doesn't work anymore because um, bloggers are not stupid. Editors are not stupid. I mean, come on, if I want to refer to a nice resource from the internet, I will just go to Google, I will type the topic and I will find something that I like, something that ranks in Google and probably this is the best content on that given topic. I don't need someone random that I don't know to reach out to me uh, via email and uh, offer me their page because it's super nice and it will bring value to my readers. This, this uh, works um, maybe below 1%, super low. Don't waste your time doing such things. Um, the main problem is don't that Don't destroy people... the internet <laughs> by filling people's inboxes with this. Everyone's been guilty of doing it though, right? <laughs> One point. Yeah. Um, the thing is that uh, if you want to have a good uh, outreach game, you need to know what value you are bringing to the table. So it's not enough just to say, oh, my resource is the best on that topic. You should link to it because this is the best resource. No, the best resource is in the top of Google and everybody can find it in one minute and link to it. So offer something else. For example, uh, a tweet, a Facebook share, or why not a backlink from another website or from your own website? Or maybe if you an expert at something, let's say user experience, you can give a tip to this person uh, on their blog or you can comment for 10 minutes on their blog and record a video and send it to them, or just uh, bring some value. It depends what um, 
skills you have, what background you have. But if you are not bringing value in your outreach emails, then the partnership is not equal. And it's always about partnership. It's always about reciprocity in link building. And it will turn off many people if you are not ready to cooperate and make equal partnership. Yeah, I think that's a really good point about the equal partnership because when I judge people's outreach emails, you know, people pay me for it or, or my team members, then I always tell them you're you're begging right here or you're pressuring them or whatever. And that disturbs the whole um, uh, power dynamic. So you always want to be on the same level. You don't want to force somebody into giving you the link, but you also don't want to beg them. Um, yeah, so you got to watch, you got to read your email out loud and see if you're sounding like a beggar or uh, yeah somebody trying to dominate them or if you're just coming at them from an equal level wanting uh, yeah. a mutually agreeable deal of some sort yeah Maybe i have an idea actually you hired copywriters to write your emails what about hiring sales people no <clears throat> um well i haven't tried it so i can't knock it but I have given people the feedback that this sounds too salesy. Mm -hmm. um, so I think maybe salespeople, I, I actually don't know because I never hired a salesperson. But I, I think if they're trying to convince a person, it's not going to work. But maybe uh, modern salespeople are different. But I like when people are very laid back and are like, look, look, here's the resource. If you want to add it, it's fine. If you don't want to add it, it's fine as well. I think it would be good for your audience because of this and this and this. But I could try with a salesperson. It could work. But I, yeah. I don't want them to be like, and wait, there's more, you know, or or I don't know, that horrible sales tone. Yeah, maybe someone who specializes in business uh, development, business yeah. partnership. But I think my outreach style is also often very creative. And maybe copywriters lean more towards towards the creative side than sales mm -hmm. people. But you co could, of course, have sales copywriters. So it could work. Maybe I'll take you up on that, Georgie. And I'll, I'll Maybe work. they'll source links and find you new clients at the same time. No, I don't <laughs> want more new clients. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just going to move on to the next question. I'd be really interested, and I think the attendees would be also, just to know what some of the tools are that are um, most commonly used out of your tool sets. And for what? Um, yeah. So I use Ahrefs for about everything. Sorry, Georgie. <laughs> uh, and I use um, Pitchbox and Google Sheets um, a little bit. But we want to move everything to ClickUp. So we use ClickUp for project management, but we want to use all our sheets there as well. And I use Slack for communication. Um, and that's it. Yeah. Is there a nice alternative that you've found to Pitchbox that maybe doesn't have all the features, but uh, is slightly more accessible to more SEOs and link builders out there? Um, I think Busstream would be good. Yeah. So I don't know. So I don't know how it is if you if you manage uh, 20, 30 different projects, but I've heard a lot of good things about Busstream and I tried it out in the beginning as well. And uh, yeah, I think that could work well. Yeah, cool. right. How about uh, you, Georgie? I, maybe uh, no problem. I no longer work at Samrush. Oh, so yeah, true. <laughs> you can speak whatever you want in my presence. Uh, I also uh, use uh, Ahrefs. I use Samrush. I use, uh, I used Pitchbox before. Uh, but uh, basically, if you don't have 20 clients, as Bibi said, you can use a cheaper uh, outreach tool as well. Uh, Pitchbox, Pitchbox is uh, super, super good, uh, super high quality. It's uh, like a CRM system of, uh, you can manage multiple clients in it. But basically if you have two, three, five clients or you do outreach just for your website, for your business, you may do well with Mailshake, with uh, Busstream, or even with a simple Google spreadsheet and can't response uh, in the G Suite. So it's fine, no problem. I also love using Slack. I tried other um, 
similar services, but it doesn't uh, work uh, so well like Slack. Slack is super nifty for me. Awesome. So what would you say are the most important skills to develop in order to become you know, above average with these out outreach methods? <laughs> This is so funny because uh, this reminds me of a meme that I made, uh, I think yesterday or the day before. And it was, do you know uh, Futurama, the guy that does a thinking, thinking face like, hmm. Yeah, and, absolutely. I love this. Yeah. yeah. And I said, I said above, I said, not sure if a good link builder or bar just really, really low. Um, and I think that answers your question a little bit because if, if link builders would not obsess so much with automating everything and, and scaling and systemizing, but would just spend 5% more time and effort on thinking about what their prospects are actually interested in. And I think that would be, uh, that would be a game changer for them. So the skill is actually to, to pay more attention to your prospects um, than, than to what you want to accomplish. For me, uh, maybe because I'm working on creating different processes for everything I'm doing at the moment, but this is super important to create processes and to documentate every step you are taking. Because uh, if tomorrow your uh, virtual assistant leaves you or your writer leaves you for some reason, you want to be able to hire new people and just handle them the processes and they can start working from day one and there will be no stress for them that you are uh, teaching them directly because they just can sit comfortably drink coffee read the processes do the work yeah so on that note what skills or mindsets do you really try to develop within your team um I think skills and mindset. Yeah, like I said, pay attention to your prospects, but they have to be very content focused and language sensitive because everything I do on one hand is determined by the content. So the quality of the content ideation, things that are pitching to people or content ideation for the client, you know, for linkable assets. Um, but the other hand is uh, to have a really a good ear for how how language comes across you know if you if you uh because you're in a kind of a negotiation with a prospect when you when you do the emails and if you use little words just like just or i still haven't heard from you or you know st stuff like that it changes the whole dynamic and you don't you lose the, the person at the other end of the inbox so uh, when i hire people um, they have to be creative, but they have to really have good language skills. Like I, I'm, I'm super um, anal about that. that. That really interests me, what you just said then, Bibi. Yeah. Because I, knew, I do know other link building agencies, I won't mention any names, they, they focus on uh, high value links. That's all they do. And they are like, along with your point, Georgie, super, super process driven. But the skills that and they're looking for inside of their team uh it's not so much language based they'll they'll take care of the templates and basically they want people that can just follow a process at scale and do that all day long and yeah that's a I totally think... different way that you operate and i also <laughs> noticed that very much in your course as well oh, yeah. you were showing the the methods were just i mean they're not just something that you can just create a process for and just repeat forever um yeah that's true it is it is it is not super robotic uh well processes are important but um i i want i have four teams right and everybody has a, a specific role in the team so yes there are some data entry people and everything but even the data data entry people, they have to inspect sites. They have to judge the quality of the content on the site. So they still need those language uh, skills. And um, I think I, I I think I put more emphasis on on the hiring process. Um, so I do hire people green. I don't hire 
uh, experienced SEOs or link builders. I hire mostly copywriters and then I transform them into a link builder. But when I hire them, they already have to be kind of perfect. And, and maybe the course is different in that way um, because they already have to have the skills in them. So if you do my course and you think, fuck that, I can't do that, then hire somebody else to do it because you're, you're probably never going to get to that level of language that you need to be. Really interesting. So how about um, the we're about 15 thing? minutes to the hour. I was thinking maybe we jump in and take some questions. We've got a bunch of questions. From oh, yeah. Attendees. Uh, there's some good questions. So maybe we'll just uh, start at the top. I'm not going to ask all of them, um, but maybe we can just go oh, through a few of those and we'll take it in turns, Lauren. Uh, Vincent is asking if you have any tips for link building in Germany. Do you guys do any German link building at all or do you have any tips i did some <laughs> okay um, it's typically known as a, a difficult market to build links in yeah did you have much uh, success no i didn't well the thing was also that i didn't want to do the german link building but for some reason i said yes to the client and i said let's try this but then i didn't have german people so we couldn't do it we had to reach out in english but then offer German content. So it really didn't work well. So I said to them, I can't do this. But I did do it in Sweden. And there we did uh, we did Swedish outreach. And I think every culture is different. So um, you learn that while you're doing it. With the Swedish people, we had a really high response rate. It was I think it was 72% or something. But then they didn't understand what we wanted. So we needed to change our whole email so they understood what what the whole point was and in germany um people were replying and they didn't like that we were talking to them in english i don't know georgie do you have any uh, i have done a little bit of outreach for all european markets and uh, basically german market is super difficult there are a lot of uh, pbns there and everybody wants money for links but uh, it's uh, similar for the Nordic mar markets as well, for uh, Swedish, Danish, Norwegian. Uh, basically there you can do some link exchange or value exchange uh, if you have good resources, but uh, it comes to money very often. Well, I did do Dutch link building. Maybe it's a little bit similar to German. Maybe that can help because we didn't, we didn't always get paid links. We also get unpaid links, but we didn't email because uh, Dutch people, they, they don't like to be charmed. They, they are very direct and, and rude and dry. So we reached out to them and we said in the subject line in Dutch then, yes, another outreach email. And then it opened up and it was like, you know, sorry about this lame email, blah, 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 blah. And people, and people liked it. They thought it was um, mm -hmm. uh, disarming. Yeah, it's, it's cultural thing. So uh... yeah. Dutch people, they uh, like when you are transparent and honest, when you are genuine. So that could help with German, I don't know. So we're, while we're on the same uh, topic, we have a little follow-up and it's for a foreign site. What's the max percentage of English uh, links that you're building? Huh? For a foreign site, say you have a... <clears throat> a site that's in another language what's the maximum percentage of english links that you're building oh if it's a foreign site i'll i only build links from the country so i don't know zero yeah zero. <laughs> oh, yeah. that makes that makes that, sense probably it's not, uh, not a um a conscious cho choice like i don't want to build english links i don't know I probably think. the guy is asking that because there are not many uh, possibilities, opportunities to build oh, okay. links from the local market. So uh, I think uh, some languages like Dutch language, for example, it's totally fine to build uh, English links. Um, Swedish as well, probably it's totally fine. But it's a language which is uh, far away from English. It could be not so natural, like Bulgarian, for example. It's a different alphabet. Of course, some um, percentage of the links they will be english anyway because uh, this is the most popular language of the internet i guess or at least the world we are living in 
So you can build some links from English sites and you'll be fine, no problem. Uh, this one's a question for Bibi, it's from Noah Qureshi. Uh, thanks, Noah. We, it was, it's about list building for uh, the travel niche. He was asking oh. for some tips on how you go about list building um, within that niche, for instance, or I, I guess suppose uh, if it's the same process for other niches to know a little bit about your, how you go about that. Um, does he mean list building with prospect list building? Yeah, prospects. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I have a, I have a client in the hospitality, so it's travel and, and dining. Um, and I've done travel sites as well. So for list building, I think, yeah, it depends on the target page where you're building your links to. So maybe, I don't know if he can say that, but if it's to a informational page or a category page or something like that. Does he specify anything? I got no update just yet. Ah, we might okay. come back to that one then. Okay, so it would probably be easier to uh, build links for an informational page. So let's say, um, it's about seven tips for women traveling alone, right? And then you would have to look at sites that target to the same audience. So maybe it's women over a certain budget or certain age or that, that are interested, interested in cultures. Or maybe it's uh, apps, you know, that, tar that are targeting women. Um, there are so many uh, businesses out there that, that cater to the same audience that that would be really good list uh, to build. And then if you follow the segmenting part, you should just have a very separate prospect list. So this prospect list is only uh, traveling apps that are targeting um, women. Or this is a prospect list that are all the travel agencies for a specific uh, location. And then you can um, uh, tailor your template accordingly. So, so you do that to help your personalization? Yeah, exactly. So, I, I mean, if, if the world was, uh, if it was my choice, I would just send them all the same template, right? But it, the conversion just works better if you segment and then uh, theme your template. Uh, we got Excellent. a good question so let's from talk... Will. Oh. Sorry, Lauren. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> so how do you end up that your emails don't end up in spam? What are some deliverable? Ability tips that you have um i I'm, I'm going first the whole time because georgie told me to but now i feel bad <laughs> no problem um, you're a lady as well so oh, okay <laughs> so how do you know that i'm a lady no i'm kidding but because your chicken is uh telling me that true this is true yeah. true sign um email deliverability so I'm not a super expert about it because we have, I have my business partner, but we set up all the stuff like um, DKIM, the SP, SPF, the, those are all like records that you have to have. So your uh, email looks uh, trustworthy to most of the email servers. And then we warm the email up slowly. Uh, you can uh, Google on, um, uh, or you can search on YouTube. There are a lot of instructional videos like how to warm up your email. Um, and then we also have in Pitchbox, you have email health scores you can check. And uh, what else do we do? We also make sure that the subject line is personalized. So even if we use a subject line that's, um, that we use for all the prospects, there's something in there that's personalized. So it's not the same subject line used over and over again. And, um, oh, there your pillow. Uh, and make sure that you, you're, you're emailing the right uh, addresses. Um, yeah, so find the right email address for your prospects. Do you stay away from generic emails as well? I've heard that that can affect spam scores, like general admin info. Oh, yeah. Using people's names only. Yeah, I do always try to find the best email, but if it's not possible, then I'll go for an info ad or a marketing ad or something like that. Mm -hmm. This is uh, important. Oh. Georgie? Georgie, sorry. 
Yeah, sorry, my internet uh, had a little problem. Okay, so what else? Uh, very interesting hack that I learned recently from the Traffic Think Tank community. Um, credit to Alexander Lubinkovich. You know all of those uh, link sellers that reach out to you on LinkedIn or email and they tell you, hi, dear, hi, sir, slash, madam. Uh, here is my list of sites, please buy and stuff like that. So you collect their emails and you put them in your outreach. <laughs> so you send them an email and those guys always reply. Oh my God, it's so horrible. I don't want to... Yeah, they will reply. They will ask, please, who are you or something like that. <laughs> oh That's your response, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, do it. Just spam them back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So don't block them. They want to talk with somebody. Yeah, I'm afraid, but isn't there the risk that if after you piss them off that they'll, they'll flag no, you? No, no. Uh, listen, does the thing, uh, they're difficult to piss off because oh. they will not realize what's happening <laughs> it takes time until they realize maybe a couple of years that you are oh. using them for that or maybe you can tell them that you like them no <laughs> so it's, it's really it's good thing, though. <laughs> and these guys might not be good at personalization but they're great at deliverability somehow yeah, yeah. at least the ones right. we see right <laughs> I got a question from uh, Will Stockton. It might be the last question we take because we're coming up to time. Oh, no. uh, or we can go over a little bit. We'll see how we go. But uh, Will wants to ask, since DA is a metric created by SEO tools, how do you measure the ROI, so to speak, of an outreach campaign without referencing the vanity metrics? And I guess he's talking about to your clients, how do you show the value and the individual value of of the links is it just using da um individual link value i don't know but if traffic goes up and it's good traffic that that's good that's what you that's what they want right so i don't really understand so you're, you're reporting traffic increases no 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 i just deliver the links but then they, they see the results on their end my client. Okay. So if it makes them happy, cool. <laughs> so you're not you're not going into the details of this. This link is really high quality. It's a super good DA. Look at the traffic coming in from this one. It's very trusted. You can see. No, so that's not that's not. But that's not how my clients come in. So I think. <clears throat> by the way, this is a good um, thing to follow for anyone who wants to go into link building and wants to have clients. Is that you need to attract the clients that you want, right? So. Um, on your site or on your your uh, lead process when leads are coming in, you need to make sure that you that automatically or however the clients that you don't want are filtered out. So if a client comes to me and says, "Yo, I want DA sixty links," I'm like, "The bye," not 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 like that, but you know, I I I um, brand myself as somebody who doesn't go for DR or whatever, so that I don't get those clients. Um, so I don't have to have that discussion, like you say afterwards, like, oh, but it's high DA and it's this and that. Yeah, but mm -hmm. do you know, sometimes uh, even the best clients, they don't understand much of SEO and they need some metric. Maybe mm -hmm. this is a business person. This is uh, someone without SEO background and they want something to navigate themselves. Uh, that's why they yeah. go... Uh, to to track uh, domain authority by MOS or domain rating by Ahrefs. Those are the two uh, most famous metrics. So here comes the moment to educate your client, to tell them, hey, do you really want me to focus only on vanity metrics? Yeah, great question, by the way, to ask that. Um, so they uh, will start thinking about it. There are many other things like the relevancy, um also if the site a real brand what is organic traffic this website is getting uh, on a monthly basis is is it a stable curve of organic traffic or 
it's uh, a sudden drop somewhere. Um, so all of those things are much more important than DA or DR. And also uh, those metrics, they're growing. Like today my blog has domain authority one, but let's check it again in six months. Let's check it again in 12 months. And those are many other blocks. So if someone tells me I, uh, that they don't want a link from this website because the domain authority is uh, five, I will tell them that they are being naive and a little bit stupid probably <laughs> because uh, the domain authority will grow and next month it will be seven. After three months, it will be 15. So this link will get stronger and stronger as the domain is getting stronger. So there are other stuff to pay attention to. The most important thing is uh, if the blogger, the website owner is selling backlinks excessively. If uh, this is the case, don't buy. It doesn't matter if it's domain authority 50 or more, or if the website is uh, being abandoned, a drop domain, somebody built a new website on it. Okay, now, it's a new website with domain authority 50, zero organic traffic. The domain authority doesn't need anything. Domain rating, the same. I mean, those metrics, they are vanity metrics. Uh, yes, I understand that you need to report those stuff to your client. Maybe if this is what they want, keep doing it because you are giving them something to understand. SEO is super difficult. So give them some numbers to understand. This is how it works. It's not easy. Uh, I always had problems with this as well. Yeah. Right. So it's about at uh, your level, Bibi, you're mostly filtering the clients that you want to work with. So the guys who are, are demanding in terms of authority of the links, they won't even make it through to being clients. And both of you are making sure that you're building trusted links and you have your own filtering processes to make sure that the links aren't being built on sites that are going to be harmful or ineffective. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I think it's important either way, <clears throat> whether or not you have a client that does understand it or doesn't understand it to manage the expectations as much as possible uh, from the beginning. So that when they get the links, they're not surprised by, you know, the type of links they're getting, but it's hard. Like Georgie says, um, when he was talking, I was thinking back and I, and I thought about two or three clients where, yeah, it was clear from the beginning. And then after a while, they read an article by Neil Patel or something and they were like, hey, <laughs> you know, uh, we should get a link from this. And then, yeah. The main problem here is that uh, all those uh, link uh, building companies like NoBS uh, links, uh, Loganix. I mentioned names. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, all of them, they are uh, selling uh, links. You can check on their pages, uh, selling links on different prices, depending metrics. Most yeah. often the main authority or the main rating. So if I'm a client and I have $5,000 per month for link building and I go to one of those sites, I put my money there. And at the end of the month, I know what uh, I'm getting. I will get 10 links with uh, domain authority above 40, for example. So I'm calm. But if I go to uh, someone else and I pay $5,000 and I get three links, which are domain authority 12 and 15, I may think, why? Uh, I'm getting <laughs> tricked here and my money is uh, not buying me what I expect. So this is the problem for the clients, I guess. This is a little bit psychology here. They, are, uh, they want to know what they are getting for their money. So if you, if you educate them about the whole process that you are setting up, you are making outreach and you are getting the best from this outreach campaign. Uh, you are get, choosing the best sites, getting them links from those sites. So you are not uh, selling them something specific, but you are making, you are selling the whole strategy, the whole campaign them yeah it's always so is this really an educational part of the process with your clients to make sure that they understand what you're actually doing absolutely yes great you, so, you wanted to add on that 
I just thought you were looking to talk. No? Oh. <laughs> no. Was there any questions that you guys wish someone had asked you, but they didn't? Uh, hmm. I don't, I haven't seen all the questions, so I don't know. Um, Nothing comes yeah, to no, I, I, there, I don't think there's a question that I wanted them to ask, but I do want to say that um, there's not, like I said before, there's not long, one tactic or one strategy that's the best. You got to pick the one that suits your goals best and also you, you know, like um, if, 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 it, if you're good at relationships, then do relationship link building, go on LinkedIn, you know, make connections. If you're good with language, then do unique or creative emails. If you're really good at analytics and, and can reverse engineer exactly how your competitor did stuff, then do that, you know. But it's not that it's not one thing is better than the other, but you have to choose something that's yeah, closest to your skills and personality. And I think people just try to copy something without having the 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 same mindset or or really getting the philosophy behind the tactic and then they just copy it and it's just an empty shell and then it fails. So that's something that's, that I, I don't know how that will be a question, but <laughs> yeah, it's it, it makes sense. Definitely. Uh, what I would like to add is uh, the following. Um, start creating processes for different methods one by one. For example, this month you're creating a process about linked and linked mentions someone is mentioning your brand name if it's a big brand this could be the case you create a process for that and then it's uh, going on without you doing anything your uh, assistant your team will be managing the work and you're reaping a couple of backlinks a month from that next month you are focusing on guest posting you create the processes templates uh, what exactly you are doing there um, lists, you set up your teams on working on that and uh, after that it gets you links as the time goes. Uh, after that you set up the next process infographic outreach for example, it doesn't work so well anymore for many industries but just an example and you make your teams to work together, you create the processes and then it works for you. That's really good advice. Thanks for that, Georgie. Thank you, Andrew. <clears throat> Guys, uh, we're going to wrap it up now. How can people get in contact with either of you uh, after the webinar if they want to talk about uh, maybe doing business with you or just have another question which we didn't uh, unfortunately get time for? What's the best way? Um, you can ask me questions in the Internet Marketing Gold community because I really like that community. So ask, post your question there, tag me. Um, otherwise, you can uh, check out my business site. It's bbbuzz.com. That's B-I-B-I -B -I and buzz like a B, dot com. Um, yeah, and just Google BB the Link Builder and you'll find me in other places, uh, on other places as well. Yeah, that's great. I will drop uh, two links here. Uh, if the panelists allow me. Um, this is my blog that I launched today, so you can subscribe for my newsletter. Uh, and this is also my LinkedIn. Feel free to send me a request there, an invite, so we can connect and stay in touch. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to me wherever you want, via email or LinkedIn or Twitter. So no problem. In the replay page on our website, we'll also have a link out to you, both your websites and uh, LinkedIn profiles as well. Cool. Cool. Lauren, uh, it's time to announce the competition winner. Oh, awesome. Me. All right. <laughs> Are you ready? Let's make it Nicholas Roy. Nicholas, are you still here? You're Ooh. still here. Nicholas. I'm going to allow you to talk if you want. Talk, say something. Talk. Hey, Nicholas. Hello, guys. Congratulations. Congratulations. Nicholas, he's a How do you feel? 
I'm gonna put my camera on. Just give me yeah. a second. Are you comfortable? Where's the? I don't see where to put my camera on. Uh, maybe we have to allow permission for that. Here we uh, go. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> we oh, can I'm see you though. Know. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I'm really happy. Where are you? Uh, where are you at uh, in right now? I'm uh, near Montreal, so uh, I do SEO. I'm really. Oh no! I can't hear him. Oh, we lost Nicholas. That's okay. We'll send out the uh, promo code for that and the T-shirt. We'll need your address. We'll send you an email. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Send your email. Oh, there he is. He's back again. Montreal. Oh, oh there he is. Great. Wow, are you in a swimming pool? No, I'm not. <laughs> Why? Why in a swimming pool? Because you're all green blue to me. I know, it's just because I'm in front of a forest. That's why I'm in front of a oh, window. Oh, can we so. see the forest? Nice, show us. Uh, you could, yeah. Well, let me try to show you something. I love Will forest. you see something? Uh, I don't lift your whole computer off the desk. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, oh, nice. Oh, Canada is so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, really. Well, what so, do you do, Nicholas? What's your company and what do you do? My company is Roy SEO. I do SEO mostly in French. I, I'm in the province of Quebec, so uh, I'm French Canadian. So mostly, almost all of my clients are in French. So yeah, I do SEO. And uh, I'm not a member of IMG, but I know about it. And I was like, I want to, I want to know it a little bit more and probably become a member. And now, wow, this gift, I'm really happy. <laughs> awesome. How do, you, awesome. how do you do a bilingual, wait, do you do bilingual SEO then? In, in, in yeah. The yes, I, I, I'm sorry. How does that go in, in terms of link building or anything you do? Well, most of the most of the link building is in English, but I do a little bit in French. However, the, the pool of websites in French is much smaller, especially in Canada. If I go in France, yeah, I can contact people in France, but still it's, it's easier to do link outreach uh, in English for sure. I can't believe that there are a lot of websites in Canada that are just in French. Amazing. Uh, it's only in the province of Quebec. It's only one province out of 10 and it's because of uh, history and everything, but it's the only province where uh, it's mostly French. However, all people in business are bilingual or almost because we're like a little town in the in uh, North America, but we're 8 million people who speak mostly English, uh, mostly French, but we also speak English. Nice. Like Georges Saint Pierre, GSP. If you if you know MMA, Georges Saint Pierre is from province of Quebec, so he has an accent similar to mine. I don't know well, if you your, know GSP. Your accent but... is uh, not uh, so obvious, like uh, French people okay. from France. I think. Uh, yeah, no, people that. from France, people from France don't practice English as much as we do because we are sur we are surrounded by English. I live like. Yeah. Uh, 10 kilometers away or uh, 16 miles, uh, less than 16 miles. No, it was like eight miles from Vermont. So, you know, I'm really close. Yeah, By the way, oh. uh, after watching Bibi's course entirely and my course entirely, our courses, you can check uh, Darby Rahmi's course. She's also from Canada and she has a course on the IMG. Oh, uh, cool. cool. Darby Rahmi. If I pronounce it correctly, Andrew. Darby. Check that out for sure. Yeah, she's French Canadian too. There's a couple of members that are oh. French Canadian, so we'll introduce you. Cool. And uh, um, but cool. do you build? It does. Does it matter whether you build the English language links or the French language links to your site? Well, for relevancy, I, I try to do as much English links to English pages or English portions of the website and French links so that, yeah, for relevancy, of course. Yeah. yeah. Okay, interesting. Cool. 
Thanks a lot, Nicholas. So thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. All right. We're running a little bit behind. Uh, hope that was okay with everyone. But we'll wrap it up now. I just want to thank the speakers we had on, Bibi, Georgie. It was awesome. I, I love the free-flowing um, nature of the the webinar today. We didn't get through everyone's questions, but we had a great conversation. So sorry to everyone who we didn't get uh, questions answered. Uh, if you want to know about the next event, which we're running in another few weeks time, similar format to this, you can get notified if you just go to internetmarketing.gold forward slash blog, just put your email address in there. And there's Bibi the egg. <laughs> oh, you again. Sorry, go on, Andrew. I just couldn't help myself. I, I think that's pretty much all we've got. So we'll we'll leave it there for today. But I hope we'll see you all next time when uh, we come back for the SEO Lounge. All right, it was awesome. Thank you, guys. And Georgie, thanks for not killing me. I thought it was going oh, to be. Oh, thanks, thanks for not beating me today. <laughs> she beats me very often. Next time. Online. Mostly <laughs> online with her uh, sword. Oh, yeah. I also do sword fights if anybody wants to see it. That's a whole other video. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do another course on that yeah. in the future. All, All right, right, everyone. Awesome. Enjoy the rest of your day. We'll chat soon. Bye. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.